Hey guys, you're surely Kevin Grace. I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana at Mount Olivet Cemetery. Paying my respects to a singer, pianist, and rock and roll pioneer. That man, Henry Rowland Bird. And you may know him as Professor Longhair. When he had his group together, uh, he wound up getting that nickname, Professor Longhair, because everybody in the group had long hair. So the group was called Professor Longhair and the Four Hairs. But he uh, did a lot of traveling and it did take a toll on his health and he, he stopped a little bit. And um, he wound up in 1977 opening, uh, converting a warehouse into a nightclub called Tepatino's. And that's still around and it has a lot of his memorabilia there. Now he died at a young age in 1980 at uh, age 61 but he's buried right around the corner from Ellis um, Marcellus Jr. He's right over here and so we have a lot of history here as far as musicians you have uh, Henry Bird you have Ellis Marcellus and Fats Domino are buried here at this cemetery as well if you like this video please subscribe down below and feel free to leave any comments about professor longhair henry Rowland bird henry or bird Rolling or whatever they wanted to call me, a little loving Henry or whirlwind. They knew nothing about none of these names, but I wore long hair all the time. So some of them would call me long hair. In 51, you had your picture, Tipitina, right? Tipitina, that's what they say. I, I never drew anything from it. They tell me about you just get a couple of your expenses. You know, what do you know what that meant? I wasn't getting nothing, you know. Looking back on it now, been well, I haven't had the mind to go back into the saloons gambling and hustling like I've been doing, you know. How did you start in the career as a boxer? I was just good. I was fighting anyway. You had to fight the idea. If you want to cross Canal Street or Melba Mean Street or Lula Avenue, you'd be just get ready to fight. We weren't able to buy no instruments. And we had to make our own. We had little dime horns and screw the top off and put a cigarette paper in it. We just didn't have a drum then, so we got a soap box and we used to go down and we dig reels at the moving pitches and make a cymbal out of one and a snare drum out of the other. We get a tomato can, we make our different little tum tums out of those and nail them on the box. I like to change keys. I'm about the only rhythm piano player that changes the keys. I play a lot of things in E. <laughs> flat of them. Boogie Wiggle, I'll play that in D. This is what Rock Sullivan taught me, to change your keys. Soul music comes out of church house like uh, you get spiritual churches, you get sanctified churches. You ever been around any of those type of churches? This is so, you know, get down. When they say get down, in other words, coming back to the uh, musical world that we are in, they call it the boogie. You have trouble teaching the drummers? Definitely. Why? This is my hardest, because they can't give me the, the different beats that I, uh, I, I want to hear. They call themselves drummers. They really, they can't play with me. I have the opportunity to play with some Spanish boys, and Jamaica boys. So these styles and the patterns that I hear, what they be doing, they just come naturally, come to me. So I practice them. You said you were a rhythm piano player. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, I got a lot of rocking in what I do. You notice I never play nothing straight. Anything I do, I put a little pep in it, a little bounce. Uh, something to make you know that it's not a love song. 
on in the hole. This week we wrap up Black History Month in the same week as Fat Tuesday, making this the perfect time to celebrate the life and music of New Orleans musician Professor Longhair. Born Henry Roland Byrd in 1918 in Bogalusa, Louisiana, Byrd moved to New Orleans as a very young child. His mother introduced him to music and soon Byrd was singing, dancing, and playing simple rhythm instruments he made himself. People that influenced me was mostly my mother because we were having fun during that time when she was teaching me to play music. By listening to her, I decided I wanted to be one of the prizes in the family to take after her. When Byrd found a discarded piano, he fixed it up and made it his own. And he began to develop his signature style that blended boogie woogie and Caribbean musical styles like rumba and mambo. Toot Washington and Stormy Weather and Sullivan Rock and Sonny Boy Williams. I had some pretty good teachers to be hanging around. This is where it all came from. What I learned from Sullivan and Stormy and Toots and my mother, well, and, uh, I developed a little few things of my own, put the whole thing together and made a gumbo out of it. In the late 1940s, Bird began performing at clubs. He had long hair, not something that was looked upon very highly in the 1940s, even for a dancer and entertainer. One club owner thought a way to make Bird's long hair a bit more palatable to concert goers. So Mike come down and said, man, you're knocking him out. Long hair, he said, by the way, he said, uh, where you get the long hair name from? I said, oh, people just call me that because they don't know my real name. He said, no, we don't want that. I'm gonna give you another name. From now on, you are the professor. Professor Longhair, who soon became known as Fess to friends and fans, helped define the sound of New Orleans, influencing such musicians as Fats Domino, Dr. John, and Alan Toussaint. Here's what Alan Toussaint said about Fess in an interview with Sound Opinions back in 2015. It's echoed in my songs, whether you can hear it or not, as for the licks themselves, but my heart always has some Professor Longhair in it, in probably everything I do. Fess, as far as I'm concerned, he was like the Bach of Rock in New Orleans. In the mid-1960s, Professor Longhair's music career began to decline, and he fell into some gambling debts. Fortunately, in the early 70s, he experienced a resurgence performing at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival in 1971 and going on tour in North America and Europe for the rest of his career. In 1975, his album Professor Longhair, Live on the Queen Mary, was recorded during a party hosted by none other than Paul and Linda McCartney on board the retired luxury ocean liner, the RMS Queen Mary. Recording albums, appearing on shows like PBS's Soundstage, and playing gigs at home and abroad, returned Professor Longhair to the spot he rightfully holds in the clubhouse of great New Orleans music makers. It was in 1980, the night before a gig, Professor Longhair died in his sleep of an apparent heart attack. One year after passing, Professor Longhair was inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame. Other awards followed. He received a posthumous Grammy Award in 1987 and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1992. Perhaps most importantly, Professor Longhair's influence remains in the musical style he helped create. His hometown of New Orleans is well known for Fat Tuesday, also called Mardi Gras. And one of Professor Longhair's most important songs, Go to the Mardi Gras, is a song that's celebrated and cherished in New Orleans to this day. <laughs> 